we shall talk about the general characteristics and classification of phylum mechanodermata. The most important characteristics which are likely to appear in the MSET, AAPMT and other exams I will put before you. Now the echinodermata, the term echinodermata was coined by Jacob Klein. The term echinodermata was coined by Jacob Klein. Now echinodermata is the only invertebrate phylum with uh, certain cardiac characteristic features. It is the only invertebrate phylum with uh, the following cardiac characteristic features. Number one. It is the only invertebrate phylum which is an enterocelomate. Number two, only invertebrate phylum with the mesodermal endoskeleton. The endoskeleton is in the form of dermal ossicles. dermal ossicles, the calcareous dermal ossicles that fuse to form endoskeleton and that it happens to be mesodermal like that of vertebrates. It is only invertebrate phylum which is a deuterostomian like all cardates, echinoderms are also deuterostomians. Radial indeterminate cleavage like vertebrates, even echinodermata here now, cleavage is radial and indeterminate. It has got both phosphocreatine and phosphoarginine as for phosphogens here now. In all other invertebrates you now, phosphoarginine is present, whereas in vertebrates, phosphocreatine is present. In echinodermata and hemicardata, both phosphocreatine and phosphoarginine are present. They act as phosphogens you now, provide ATP during muscle contraction. So, these are all the uh, cardiac characteristic features of echinoderms you now, enterocelomate, mesodermal endoskeleton in the form of dermal ossicles, deuterostomian nature, radial and indeterminate cleavage, presence of both PC and PE as the phosphogens. The unique characteristics of echinoderms are, number one, all are exclusively marine. All are exclusively marine, at least in Porifera, there are two families, Potamylidae and Spongylidae, which are freshwater, whereas in Echinoderms, all of them are exclusively marine. Instead of dorsal and ventral surfaces, body is distinguishable into oral and aboral surfaces. Where in most of the echinoderms, oral surface is directed downwards and aboral surface is directed upwards, you know. The oral surface corresponds to dorsal side and aboral side corresponds to ventral side. Oral surface is directed downwards and aboral is directed upwards. It is also one of the unique characteristics of echinoderms. You know. Another unique characteristic feature of echinodermata is the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical while the adults are pentamerous readily symmetrical with uh, identical halves called antimeous, identical halves called antimeous. Plus 
Presence of ambulacral system or water vascular system is one of the unique characteristics of echinoderms, you know, where the main function of water vascular system is locomotion. Besides locomotion, it also helps in respiration, excretion and food capture. But the main function entrusted to the water vascular system is locomotion. Absence of heart and respiratory pigment is also one of the unique characteristics of echinoderms, you know. Echinoderms have open type of blood vascular system which is divisible into hemal and perihemal systems. Divisible into hemal and perihemal systems, you know. And hemal system encloses the main organs like uh, aboral hemal ring, oral hemal ring and an axial sinus and axial gland. Perihemal system inclu includes the sinuses that are given off from hemal ring, perihemal ring that is aboral perihemal ring, oral perihemal ring and the outer axial sinus but they do not have heart and respiratory pigment. The axial gland that lies within the hemal system corresponds to heart. You know. So, true heart is absent, the axial gland that lies within the uh, hemal system corresponds to heart. You know. Presence of pedicel area is also one of the unique characteristics of echinoderms. The body spines are modified into certain pincer like structures called pedicel area. These pedicel area are meant for cleaning the body surface. The main function of pedicel area is to clean the body surface, you know. Sometimes they also help in offense and defense, you know. The pedicel area, most of them, the pedicel area are two jawed. They got the two jaws like this. So, this is the outer epidermal sheath. And these are the jaws, you know, which are arranged crossing on each other towards the posterior end. Then at the base, they have got a structure called basilar piece. These are the jaws, you Jaws are provided with teeth like projections. Then entire pedicillium is covered by epidermal sheath and it has got two sets of muscles. Adductor and abductor muscles which are meant for opening and closing of the jaws. So, each pedicillarium is a modified body spine. It has got a pair of jaws. Both the jaws at the base are supported by basilar piece and the entire pedicillarium is covered by an outer epidermal sheath here now. The movement of the jaws is brought about by two sets of muscles called adductor and abductor muscles. In most of the poriferans, I mean most of the echinoderms, the pedicillaria are two jawed while in echinoidea, class echinoidea, they are three jawed here you now.
So these are the components of water vascular system or ambulacral system. Water vascular system or ambulacral system is a modification of hydrocele of the body coelom here now. Body coelom is divisible into somatocele and hydrocele. The hydrocele transforms into water vascular system or somatocelom or axocelom transforms into the body enterocelom here now. Now this water vascular system consists of a pentagonal or a circular it consists of an a pentagonal or a circular oral hemal ring that lies on oral side. Now it is in turn connected to the madriporite that lies on aboral side by madriporic canal. Madriporic canal, which is also called stone canal. The madriporic canal or stone canal is enclosed in axial sinus, you know. Along with the axial gland, it is embedded in axial sinus. The madriporite lies on aboral side at the base of two antimias called bivium. The rest of the antimias are called trivium. Then it acts as a filter. It helps in filtering the seawater and discharges purified form of seawater into water vascular system that is oral hemal ring through madriporic canal or stone canal. Now the oral hemal ring at each corner gives rise to ring canal or radial canal. At each kanda, it gives rise to ring canal or radial kanda. The radial canal passes through the ambulacral groove of each antimere. And each radial canal in turn gives rise to unequal lateral canals, which are also called podial canals. Each lateral radial canal gives rise to unequally arranged lateral canals or podial canals. You know. The lateral canals or podial canals towards the tip are provided with tube feet. Provided with the tube feet. You know. Each tube feet has has a podial canal or a lateral canal. Podial canal or a lateral canal. Then it has a swollen structure called ampulla and a narrow podium and a sucker at the tip. Each tube feet has a podial canal or lateral canal, a swollen ampulla, a narrow podium and a sucker at the tip. Tube feet are mainly meant for adhesion and prehension of food particles. They, at the same time, they also help in excretion and respiration. You know. They also help in excretion and respiration. You know. okay, like that, each lateral canal or podial canal is provided with two rows of tube feet which are arranged at two levels, inner tube, uh, inner tube feet and the outer tube feet. You know. At the tip of each radial canal, there is a, an eye which is a photoreceptor and there is an olfactory tentacle. There is an olfactory tentacle here now. In between the radial canals, there is a pear shaped polyan vesicle. A pear shaped polyan vesicle is present. Five polyan vesicles are present here now. These polyan vesicles act as hydrostatic receptors here now. Pressure resistors are hydrostatic receptors here now. Then on the inner side of the ring canal, on the inner side of ring canal, there are nine Tiedemann bodies. There are nine Tiedemann bodies. One Tiedemann body is absent due to the encroachment of Madripori canal. canal. So the structures which are present towards the inner side are called Tiedemann bodies. Nine of them are present. They are present on the inner side of ring canal interradially. You know. Tiedemann bodies synthesize the lymphocytes of water vascular system. You know. So these are the important components of water vascular system with a, a ring canal or a oral, oral hemal ring that lies on the uh, oral side embedded in the central disc canal. You know. The ring canal at the corners gives rise to radial canals. Radial canals give rise to unequally arranged, unequal and alternately arranged uh, podial canals and lateral canals. Towards the tip, the lateral canals are provided with tube feet. Each tube feet has a swollen ampulla, a narrow podium and a sucker at the tip. 
The ring canal is connected to the madreporite that lies on the aboral side by an S-shaped madreporic canal or stone canal. The madreporic canal is embedded in axial sinus along with the axial gland here now. And there are 5 polyan vesicles and 9 Tiedemann bodies. Polyan vesicles act as hydrostatic receptors while the Tiedemann bodies here now 9 in number act as lymphocytes that is they synthesize lymphocytes of water vascular system here now. Now the oral surface of uh, the echinoderms if you observe here now they have got a central disc here now this is central disc. And the central disc is provided with antimias. These are the antimias. Antimias, you know. Each antimia has an umbilical groove. The umbilical groove traverses through each antimia. The umbilical groove traverses through each antimia. And this umbilical groove is surrounded by movable and immovable spines which you call them ambulacral and adambulacral spines you know. Apart from these, two feet are also present on either side of the ambulacral groove you know. You know on the oral side there is a mouth at the center, this is the mouth you know which is also called actinosome you know. So on the oral side, this is the central disc, central disc has it is centrally situated mouth or actinosome and these are the antimias. Each antimere has an ambulacral groove. Ambulacral groove is surrounded by ambulacral and adambulacral spines. Ambulacral and adambulacral spines apart from the two feet. So these are the components of the oral surface of the body here now. On the aboral surface, this is a central disc. All these are antimeres. These are the antimeres here now. Then there is a madreporite that lies at the base of two antimeres. Those two antimeres are called bivium. And the rest of the antimeres are called trivium. The arrangement of madreporite suggests the bilateral ancestry of echinoderms and there is an anus at the center, anus at the center. Then on the antimeres there are several pedicillaria, pincer like pedicillaria are present on the aboral side abundantly, profusely arranged pedicillaria are present apart from the spines, apart from the spines you know. So, this with regard to components of the aboral side in most of the echinoderms you know. So, most of the echinoderms madreporate and anus are present on the aboral side and uh, the anus uh, that is mouth is present on the oral side you know. In echinoderms definite excretory organs are absent, the respiratory organs also help in excretion you know. Respiration takes place by different kinds of respiratory organs, you shall come to know when you talk about the classification of echinodermata you know. Then echinoderms, as I made a mention earlier, the blood vascular system is open type or lacunar type without heart and respiratory pigment here now. Nervous system also includes only radial nerves, you know. Radial nerves are present traversing through the antimeres, you know. And the sense organs are a photoreceptor eye and an olfactory tentacle which are there towards the tip of each antimere here now. Another unique characteristic features of uh, Unique characteristic feature of echinoderms is all of them are unisexual here now. Okay, without any exception, all of them are unisexual without sexual dimorphism. That is, male and female look alike here now. And in all echinoderms, life cycle is indirect with the characteristic larva here now. All echinoderms have an ancestral larva called diplurula. An ancestral larva called diplurula here now. The classification part of echinodermata. It is divided into two subphylums. This classification I repeat once again. Phylum echinodermata is divided into two subphylums here now. Subphylum Pelmatozoa, subphylum Elithrozoa. Pelmatozoa, they are, some are sedentary and sessile. 
and some are free living some of them are sedentary and sessile like sea lilies are sedentary and sessile whereas feather stars are free living you know when elytrozoans all are free living in palmatozoa oral surface is upwards aboral is downwards in elytrozoa aboral is upwards oral surface is downwards oral surface is downwards you know okay whether we differentiate between palmatozoa and elytrozoa all are free living here sedentary and free living in elytrozoa oral surface is upwards oral is downwards it is reverse here oral surface is upwards and aboral is downwards you know okay then the palmatozoa includes a single class which are extant you know that is class crinoidea class crinoidea and elytrozoa includes class asteroidea class class echinoidea and class holothuraidea so it includes a single class you know which includes all living organ that is extant organism that is crinoidea in elytrozoa asteroidea ophiroidea echinoidea and holothuraidea are placed you know class crinoidea crinoidea it includes sea lilies and feather stars sea lilies are sedentary and sessile with a, a stalk they are attached to substratum by a stalk you know that stalk is formed by fusion of cirri several tentacle like projections called cirri fuse to form a stalk and by means of stalk you know the sea lilies are attached to the substratum you know feather stars are free living but with several whorls of cirri with several whorls of cirri the cirri do not fuse to form stalk but they have got several circlets of cirri so uh, once in a while you know they can rest on substratum by means of those whorls of cirri you know in both of them body is enclosed in in a shell body is enclosed in a leathery shell like structure with outer tegmen the outer part is called tegmen and inner calyx the outer aboral oral part is called tegmen and the inner aboral part of that particular shell like structure is called calyx you know then in sea lilies the antimeres dichotomously branched antimeres are dichotomously branched with the leaflet like projections called pinnules with the leaflet like projections called pinnules you know in crinoidea pedicellaria spines madreporite and suckers of two feet are absent okay in in crinoidea pedicellaria spines suckers of two feet and madreporite are absent it is only class of echinodermata in which madreporite is absent you know then both mouth and anus are on oral side both mouth and anus are on oral side you know then the ambulacral grooves 
ambulacral grooves are open they are not covered by spines you know the ambulacral grooves are open you know respiration in crinidia takes place by dermal branchiae or papulae respiration is by dermal branchiae or papulae now the larvae they have got two types of larvae you know doliolaria is a larva of feather stars pentacrinoid is the larva of sea lilies pentacrinoid is the larva of sea lilies you know then the examples are tilocrinus sea lily with a stalk bedi crinus sea lily without a stalk sea lily without a stalk tropiometra neometra lamprometra tropiometra neometra lamprometra they are all called feather stars okay these are the examples for class crinoidea unique characteristics and examples of class crinoidea class asteroidea class asteroidea includes starfish and sea stars starfish and sea stars oral surface is with mouth eboral surface is with anus and madreporite eboral surface is with anus and madreporite you know body is spiny ambulacral grooves are open ambulacral grooves are open you know the larva is bipinnaria bipinnaria and brachiolaria are the larvae bipinnaria and brachiolaria are the larvae respiration is by dermal branchiae or papulae respiration takes place by dermal branchiae or papulae pedicellaria are present pedicellaria are present in all of them you know two feet are with suckers two feet are with suckers except astropectin you know then examples for asteroidia we shall do now examples for asteroidia asterias asterina pentaceras solaster pycnopodium helianthoides
Pycnopodium helianthoides is the largest starfish. So examples are Asterias, Asterina, Pentacirus, Solasta, Pycnopodium helianthoides. All of them are called starfish or sea stars. Next is the class Ophiridia. Ophiridia includes brittle stars and basket stars. It includes brittle stars and basket stars. It is only a group of Echinodermata without anus. Anus is absent. Both mouth and madriporite are on oral side. Since anus is absent, even madriporite is shifted to oral side here now. Body is spiny. Pedicil area and spines of two feet are absent. Pedicil area and spines of the two feet are absent. The larva is called Ophiopluteus. Larva is Ophiopluteus. Respiration is by genital bursae. Respiration takes place by genital bursae. The antimias are highly fragile. The antimias are highly fragile and they exhibit unique phenomena called autotomy. They exhibit a unique phenomena called autotomy where they break off their antimias on detecting the predators. You know. Later on, they regain their antimias through regeneration process. They break off their antimias and later on regain their antimias through regeneration, which is called autotomy here you now. And uh, it is only group of echinodermata in which Tiedemann bodies are absent. Tiedemann bodies are replaced by Simroth's organs. Tiedemann bodies are replaced by Simroth's organs. The examples for Ophioridea are Ophiotrix, Ophiocoma, Ophioderma and Garganocephalus. Garganocephalus is commonly called basket star and rest of them are called brittle stars. Rest are called brittle stars. It is all about Ophiridia. The next one Class Echinoidea. Echinoidea includes sea urchins, cake urchins, heart urchins, and sand dollar. It includes sea urchins, cake urchins, heart urchins, and sand dollar. In this body is spiny, the ambulacral grooves are closed. The ambulacral grooves are present on the shell and they are closed here now. In this antimias, 
are absent. Antimeres are absent. In this dermal ossicles are fused to form a rigid shell. Dermal ossicles are fused to form a rigid shell called test or theca or corona. All the dermal ossicles come together and thereby they fuse to form a rigid shell called test or theca or corona. This is the only group of echinodermata where the pedicel area are three jawed. Pedicel area are three jawed. Another most important characteristic feature which can be asked in the MSET, APMT, and all other exams, you know, they have got a five jawed masticatory structure called Aristotle lantern. A five jawed masticatory structure called Aristotle lantern lies within the buccal cavity, you know. Presence of Aristotle lantern is one of the unique features of echinoids, you know. Respiration is by peristomial gills. Respiration takes place by peristomial gills. And the larva is echinopluteus. Larva is called echinopluteus. The examples for echinoidea are echinus, sea urchin, echinocardium, heart urchin, echinarchinus, Which is also called hurt or chin. Clypeaster, cake or chin. Echinodiscus, sand dollar. Echinus, sea or chin. Echinocardium and echinarchinus, heart or chins. Clypeaster, cake urchin, echinodiscus, sand dollar. These are some of the important examples of echinoidea. Echinosome, haplocantha is the largest sea urchin. Echinosome, haplocantha is the largest sea urchin. Class Holothuroidea. The class Holothuroidians are subcylindrical or elongated and it includes sea cucumbers. It includes sea cucumbers. Body is subcylindrical or elongated with the oral and aboral ends are at the end of the organism that is towards one end of the organism there is an oral end surrounded by oral tentacles at the opposite end of the body there is an aboral end with anus. The oral end is surrounded by oral tentacles, oral retractile tentacles which are modified tube feet. The oral retractile tentacles are there around the oral end and they are all the modified tube feet. It is the only group of echinodermata in which madriporite lies within the coelom. Madriporite lies within the coelom. Body is 
without spines body is without spines and the outer skin is leathery or coriaceous the outer skin of the body is leathery or coriaceous or velvety without spines however within the body wall certain hard wheel and axial spicules are present wheel and axial spicules are embedded within the body wall respiration is by cloacal respiratory trees respiration is by cloacal respiratory trees the tube feet are with suckers now the important characteristics of holothoria is now it includes the cucumbers where the body is subcylindrical or elongated with oral and aboral ends opposite to each other then the oral tentacles oral end is surrounded by oral tentacles which are the modified tube feet the madreporite lies within the coelom it is the only group of echinodermata in which the madreporite lies within the coelom then the body is without spines the body wall is leathery and coriaceous within the body wall certain spicules called wheel and axial spicules are present respiration takes place by cloacal respiratory trees two feet are with suckers and pedicel area are absent pedicel area are absent and the larva is auricularia the larva is called auricularia the examples for holothoraidia are synapta similis number 2 molpedia number 3 thion number 4 cucumeria number 5 holothuria synapta similis thion molpedia cucumeria and holothuria are the examples for holothuraidia where all of them are commonly called sea cucumbers